Good morning. Good to see you again today. We're glad to have you with us as we continue the study of Luke's Gospel. Uh, today we're going to be in the 18th chapter uh, covering a short section of Scripture, uh, verses 9 through verses 17. It's a very interesting uh, discussion, a uh, parable, as we continue in our study of the parables. Uh, Jesus uh, addressing a Pharisee and a tax collector. And so let's begin by reading from the ninth verse of the 18th chapter. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. So we see something slightly unusual as we begin this parable because Jesus is telling the people uh, that he's going to address. In other words, I'm going to be talking about you or your situation. Usually the parables uh, have somewhat of a loose ending for either the, the disciples or the listeners to interpret uh, what the parable means. Uh, the disciples uh, often ask Jesus, well, what did you say? I don't understand uh, what you are trying to tell us. So here Jesus said, I'm going to be illustrating those that think themselves righteous and talk down to everyone else. So in the 10th verse, it says, two men went up to the temple to pray one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Two things. One, uh, the prayer times were scheduled uh, to coincide with the morning service and the evening service, although, of course, the temple was open for people to come and pray as they, as they desired. But they uh, had two scheduled uh, times uh, per day for prayer. You couldn't have more polarized opposites than the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee was the religious leader in the church, who studied the law, proclaimed the law, held people accountable for the law, uh, was generally uh, thought, at least to themselves, to be pretty good people, to be pretty righteous in their own work and effort. The tax collector, on the other hand, was disliked by everyone, especially his own people, because he was employed by the Roman government who ruled over the people of Israel, who held them in captivity. He collected taxes from them for the Roman government. Usually he would always get more than what the taxes called for were, and he would pocket the difference. So he was getting rich off of his fellow man, and they, they didn't like him. They hated him. The tax collector was a very unpopular fellow because of his thievery. And so these two men come to the temple to pray. The Pharisee likely was in the holy of holy places. Uh, he was inside. The tax collector, on the other hand, was probably out in the common ground because he couldn't go into this more sacred area. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, robbers, evil evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. He would not even acknowledge by name the tax collector. Uh, he referred to him as someone less than himself. He thanked God for the fact that he was not like other people, that he were, was above other people. He, he held his hands up and he looked up to heaven and he thanked God 
that he was not like other men. So he is comparing himself to other men rather than to God. And he said, I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. There was only one required fast under the Mosaic law, and that was on the Day of Atonement. But the Pharisees prayed twice a week. They prayed on Monday and Thursday. And so this Pharisee was doing more than the law required in terms of fasting. He also said he ties everything that he gets, not just what he earned, but he was giving all that he got. He, he would tithe 10% of all that he got. So clearly in his own mind, he was doing much more than was required. And the way he's thinking, well, you know, I'm doing pretty daggone good because look at, look at this, I'm going above and beyond. And also it seems to me that he was praying, but he was not in prayer. It seems to me that he was merely giving God information and acknowledging how good he was before God. By comparison, the tax collector stood at a distance, probably because he was out in the courtyard. He was far off from where the Pharisee was. Perhaps the Pharisee noticed him when he came in. Perhaps the, uh, the uh, Pharisee passed by, probably didn't even acknowledge that he was there. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven. He beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner. So the Pharisee was bragging on himself, lifting his hands to heaven, looking up to heaven. The tax collector wouldn't even look up to heaven kept his head bowed, beat his chest, and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Now this response that Jesus writes in verse 14 would have been a real shocker to the Pharisees. This would have been cataclysmic to the Pharisees. This would be something that they would not expect because it says in verse 14, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. Justified means to be in good standing or in right standing with God. So Jesus is, is telling his listeners in this parable that the tax collector was justified before God, not the Pharisee, not the Pharisee. This would have been a real shock. Those who try to justify themselves by what they do will not succeed. I tell you that this man, the tax collector, rather than the Pharisee, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. I remember a story about a man that was going to heaven, and he appeared before Peter at the at the pearly gates, and pearly, uh, Peter said, said, welcome, uh, glad to have you. Uh, you're here to apply to be into heaven. 
course, this, I'm sure, is not the way it really goes, but for purposes of the story, and this man said, yes, I am, I, I'd like to get into heaven. And so Peter says, well, we've got to fill out a form, and so what all have you done? He said, you've got to have a thousand points to get in. And so the guy said, well, said, I've been in church almost all my life. Said, in fact, I was a Sunday school teacher, and I, w I was a deacon, and, uh, you know, I've really been good. Uh, you know, I served on the Thanksgiving line, and uh, Peter was just writing away as fast as he could and said, so well, that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's a pretty good resume. He said, uh, let me add this up. He said, well, you've got 36 points. And the guy was aghast. He said, 36 points, I've got to have 1,000. Peter said, yes. said, what else have you done? And the guy was squirming a little bit, and uh, he said, well, uh, I helped a lady cross the street when I was a Boy Scout, and, uh, and I picked up a guy's uh, cane when he dropped it. Uh, he said, uh, you know, I've, I've been doing a lot of things, and he was kind of squirming, and, and uh, Peter said, well, you know, that's really good. He said, uh, uh, right now you've got 56 points. And the guy was really uncomfortable. I said, oh, God, have mercy on me. Forgive me, a sinner. And Peter said, that's a thousand points. That's what God wants from us. Repentance, confession of our sin. If we move down to verse 15, this is a bit of a follow-up on verse 14. And we're talking about humility. And it says in verse 15, people were also bringing babies to Jesus to have him touch them. When the, the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. In other words, they were showing them away. They said, no, Jesus is busy, uh, uh, maybe another time. And they were showing them away, but Jesus called the children to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Children are dependent on their parents for, for provision, for protection. Uh, they, are, they are obedient to parents most of the time. But children come with a sense of humility, of knowing that they have nothing to offer. And so Jesus is saying, let the little children come to me. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter into it. So we need to come to God uh, knowing that we are unable to provide for ourselves, unable to save ourselves. We are needy in terms of our salvation, in the terms of our provision. We are needy of being in the presence of God, and God calls us uh, to be with Him, to confess our sins, and to accept Him as Lord and Savior, just as the little children did in this parable. What a blessing it is, what a privilege it is that God has provided the points we need through salvation in Jesus to be in heaven with him. Let's pray together. 
Uh, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings of the day. We thank you for the the provisions that you have provided for us, the, the freedom to live as we do and worship as we do. Uh, Father, we thank you that uh, you loved us enough to send your Son. Uh, Father, help us to recognize that, that we just can't make it without you. Uh, Father, we ask that you would would uh, walk with us, be with us, guide and direct us. Uh, Father, we pray for our church and we pray uh, for staff as we enter upon this Easter season where we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, Father, we pray that uh, that we would be like the tax collector, that we would say, Oh, Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Father, we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.